What's up, guys? The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3 that acknowledge God in all your ways and he shall direct your paths. Now, I'm, that's a very familiar scripture. Let me break down to you what that really means, okay? We have to do something, okay? We have to acknowledge him in all our ways. So before you do something, ask God what's best for you to do. Now, there's certain things in life that you already know what to do because the Bible says what you should do in each situation. Like, you know, so you just look it up, right? That's why you need to be familiar with the Bible because you won't guess. But in a lot of areas, like the Bible says, uh, you know, don't get drunk. Uh, the Bible says don't lie. The Bible says, you know, don't forsake the assemblings of yourself together. So that means go to church. Um, you know what I mean? But the Bible doesn't say where you're supposed to get a job at. The Bible doesn't say where you're supposed to live, right? So in those instances, or like who you're supposed to marry, right? The Bible says, have it be another believer, a Christian, uh, you know, not to be unequally yoked. But the Bible doesn't say specifically, this is where you go to college or don't go to college. The Bible says in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, give you hope in the future. So it's a good life that God's got planned for you. The Bible says that he knew you before you were born and that um, he has the hairs of your head numbered. His thoughts towards you are more numerable than the uh, than sand and the sea. Or I'd have to look it up to get the exact. But he cares for you and he has a great plan for your life. And back to my point, the Bible says is, is very specific about some things, but it's not specific on, you know, where, what time should I leave? Should I go this way to work? Should I go, you know what I mean? The specifics of your life, you know, that are personal to you. Okay. The Bible says to acknowledge him in all of our ways and he shall direct our paths. Now, all we have to do is acknowledge him. We have to pray. We have to ask God, who do you want me to marry? Who, uh, you know, where do you want me to live? All those types of things. Um, it says in Colossians chapter 3, to let the peace of God act as an umpire, settling with finality all thoughts that arise in your head. So, when you have God's peace on a matter, that's when you know it's the right way to choose. Okay, if you don't have peace about a certain situation, that's God's red light. Don't go, don't do this. Okay, so you have to get sensitive to that inward intuition. Okay, the Bible says in uh, uh, 1 John chapter 2 that we have an anointing, we have an unction, an inward knowing from the Holy One, God, and we know all things. We know you have an inward intuition like a gut feeling on what to do. Now, to really hone these skills, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 5, that by practice, we uh, learn to discern good and evil. By practice, we learn how to trust that inward witness, and we learn how to hear it clearly. Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. It says in Ephesians that as many as are led by the, no, I'm sorry, it says in Romans chapter 8 that as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So we can expect to be led by God. And what you have to do is you have to wait till you have peace in a matter before you go forward with it. If there's something on your mind that you don't know what to do, it doesn't say in the Bible to do this. You're not sure. It's a gray area. Okay. Find Acknowledge him in all your ways. Acknowledge him in that way. Ask God for wisdom. Say, Lord, show me what to do. Do I do this? Do I do that? And trust the Holy Spirit to make it clear and plain. And you want to wait for an inward hunch, like, a, like yeah, like a good feeling about it. If you don't have a good feeling about a certain matter, Wait longer, pray longer, wait on God on wait on God longer. The Bible says those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. You're not going to get uh, worn out waiting on God. Spend time with God. Take another few days in prayer. Ask him about it and then be quiet before him and just listen and like, okay, just want me to do this. Talk to him like your best friend. As you spend time with God regularly, you're going to get very sensitive 
to God's leading on the inside. So before long, you'll be very quickly to, to tell and to recognize that peace, that velvety peace feeling that Colossians chapter 3 talks about. It's an umpire. If you have, just like an umpire is like foul, uh, uh, strike, you know, ball, uh, he will guide you just like an umpire will in all your decisions of life by that peace. So if you have peace on a matter and you spend time with God on a regular basis, if you have peace, you can trust that peace. And if you have, um, uh, if you feel disturbed about a matter, wait up. That means hold up a minute and see if it's God's will for you or not, okay? And if you've been doing that for a little bit and you're like, man, I just don't have peace upon peace on it, don't do it, okay? That's God leading you not to do it. It's very simple. Just like in the Old Testament where God led them by fire by day or fire by night and a cloud by day and it was that obvious, it will be that obvious to you uh, when God's leading you and when God's not, but you have to do it by practice. You have to practice at it. You have to do it regular. So start acknowledging God in every single situation, and you'll get very mature in these things. And I'll, sh I'll share a testimony tomorrow about a few things that have happened to me just to help you, give you some real examples. But uh, this video is almost seven minutes, and so stay tuned for tomorrow. Make sure you hit subscribe and like so this channel grows if you enjoy it.